Hey guys, today we are going to be looking at psychology again, as we look at how we use our brains in a little game called Slay the Spire, but also on how the Slay the Spire affects our brain. In the background, there will be some gameplay footage of myself playing Slay the Spire hooked up to an EEG, which tracks brain waves, and a heart rate monitor. I will be adding text to describe any interesting points during the video. I will also be giving a summary of what my findings were later in this video. Slay the Spire is a roguelike deck building game. Roguelike games are games where you do shorter runs or playthroughs where the death means restarting, usually. These games tend to be shorter but have higher replayability in the form of randomness or difficulty. Deck builders are games inspired by card games like Magic the Gathering, which use cards with unique effects you to get to decide which will be most important for your gameplay. In a study done by the Journal of Behavioral and Social Sciences, they found that only 36% of people actually liked collecting cards and collectible card games, but 74% liked the deck building aspects. Which is probably why Slay the Spire hits really well with so many people. You don't collect the cards, you are simply building the decks. The same study looked into how cognitive scores affected and were affected by your building your own decks. With confidence level of 95%, they found that people with higher cognitive scores were building better decks and were more opt to building their own decks. From what we know about intelligence, simply working on things that are challenging in that particular form of intelligence can improve your intelligence in that form. Working on problem solving will increase your ability to solve problems in the future, for example. There are not many psychological studies done on roguelike games. They're sort of an enigma in the world of psychology, at least when looking into motivation. Psychological motivation theories all tend to revolve around some equity, the effort you put in versus the reward you get back. Combined with a little bit of conditioning, meaning you do something and you get a reward, so you're encouraged to do it again. In many roguelikes, you do things that build up your character, or in this case, your deck, which encourages you subconsciously to continue. Losing everything would cause this game to have no real motivational factors, because all the time you spent is wasted, which is why this game isn't motivated by personal accomplishments, but more by addiction. The fascinating thing is that death has gambling effects, making people want to jump back in despite losing so much progress, making this game less about motivational psychology and more about behavioral psychology. Like gamblers, losing is almost always a greater motivator than winning. You want to take that information that you gathered along the way and see if you can't get further next time. A game completely independent from other players' competition and yet you feel empowered to compete against your previous self. While looking over the recording and tracking, because this game was not very intense, I didn't expect very much when it comes to heart rate, uh, which as I was watching it really not too much did change. Uh, however, for the EEG, I was looking specifically for stress, focus, excitement, interest, and relaxation. Some notable observations were that focus would increase while I was looking at a new hand, heart rate and stress would increase when I was playing that new hand after making a plan, interest and excitement both peaked at boss number one in every run that I did, excitement would increase at the end of each fight, I'd say possibly because I was getting some loot, BPM increased during early bosses and actually decreased for later bosses, not 100% sure why, when I was low health, surprisingly stress and heart rate and excitement dropped, yet focus increased, which means maybe I was just worried, uh, but it was kind of interesting to see that. So what could we learn from Slay the Spire that might help with our psychology? I personally believe that playing deck building games is great for your memory, uh, because you need to remember the cards that you have left in your deck to see if you have an answer to what the enemies are giving you. Uh, it's also great to memorize the opponent's deck, or at least common decks in the meta that the, your opponent might be playing. Now in this particular game, uh, you need to know what each different enemy does and try to remember the strategies to do it. If you lose to an enemy because you didn't realize that it split a certain amount of health and you used too many debuffs on it and then it split and removed all of its debuffs, you might lose more than you would win, which is why memory is something that will be vastly improved by playing deck building games, in particular playing Slay the Spire. From the study that we read earlier, it is also great for cognitive scores, as each deck teaches you new rules, and every situation improves your problem-solving ability. 
We can use psychology to improve our results in this game by looking objectively at the cards you are getting as a reward. I think this is one of the biggest issues I found while playing this game. I wanted to pick a reward every time and that's my psychology that's causing that. I'm treating every fight as me getting a reward. Yet, when I was watching the strategies of some of the best players playing this game, they were actually skipping a lot of the rewards because they just didn't fit their particular deck strategy. So you need to fight against your psychology and your conditioning to improve your ability at this particular game by not picking up as many cards so that you have less cards in your deck that have anti-synergy. Uh, and that is one of the biggest ways. The second way that I noticed is that when your heart rate was increasing, I felt like I felt more rushed during a fight. So if you ever feel rushed, take a breath, maybe get up, walk around a little bit, and then you can look at your hand with fresh eyes. If you liked this game or you were interested in this game, you can check out Slay the Spire on the Humble Monthly right now in the description down below. If you're catching this a week later, then it still may be on sale here or there. It is not a very expensive game. Anyways, if you like this video and you'd like to see more, let me know what you guys would like to see. Are there certain games you'd like to know the psychology behind? Maybe a certain topic that you have always been interested. Hey, why are players doing this in this specific game? But at the end of the day, uh, if you like this, just let me know. Share it with a friend. All of those things really help me out. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching.